Welcome back. Last time we added in our signs and everything that goes along with them to check the sign. Now it's time to add in the sprite font and the way to keep track of the text we're going to use. So let's go ahead, jump over to objects, go ahead and zoom out here, and we're going to add a new sprite font. So we will double click. We will come on down to sprites, nope, sprite font. And let's just call this SF underscore white. We will actually be adding this twice, one for a shadow and one for the main text. That way it stands out. But let's go ahead and add in SF white. Click and go ahead, open a new file. We will go into our tutorial and now we are going to be using Wheelmere. I hope that's how it's pronounced. It's really cool, whatever it is, but like I just don't know how to say it, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, so we are going to choose from all of the options here. We will actually choose the first one, which is the full sheet. That just gives us the largest variety of things we can use. So we will double click and that is placed in. Let's put just a dark so we can see it. Okay, so that is all placed in. Let's go ahead, we can close this out now. As you see, everything here really messed up and that's because we got to change a bunch of settings. So let's come on down to the properties panel text. Um, that's just the text that's being displaying. This is trying to say the word text right here. It's failing. This is new. I don't know what it does. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get in first and change the character width and height. It is actually seven for this pack for both. So character width and height is seven. Our character set is actually a separate thing from this. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste it out of my notes and if you are following along, it will be down in the description. So you can go ahead and just copy and paste it out of there. You don't have to try and type out what everything says because it it's long. Um, so go ahead and just copy and paste that and you should be all good. Spacing data, I think we're okay. We don't need to put in any of that scale. What we do need to change is the horizontal alignment. We actually want this to be centered. Vertical alignment is bottom. The last thing we want to check is the origin point for this. We want at the bottom. And we're going to set this whole thing size right up here. We will set this to 96 by 48. That'll give the nice size for all of the words to fit, but not take up too much real estate. All right, so now we're going to make the shadow version. So we will right click, clone this, paste. Um, so now we have SF white. We will just make this black. And we can go ahead and double click. Oh, it tries to open up the text. So we'll come on over to Sprite Font Edit. And what we'll do is choose black. Make sure we are on 255 for the alpha. Select the fill tool. Make sure that flood fill is off and just click. And we're done. Okay, so now we need to make the sign actually do something. Or we need to actually choose what the sign says. And what we're going to use for that is an array. First off, double click array, and we will just call this sign underscore array. Okay. And we can put that in right now. It's width is 10. Let's go ahead and set its height. Actually, let's make its width. Let's make it five by five to make it easier. You can always make this larger, but for now, let's go ahead and set it to that. And to populate that array, we could say at the beginning of the level, we put in all of the things that we want, but it's, it's, really, it's really a pain to set all of the things to set every single one of the pieces of the array. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to file here. So on your project panel, scroll all the way down to the very bottom, past icons to where it says files. Before I learned this trick, I had never done this before either. And I, once I learned it, it's awesome. I use it all the time now. So we're gonna add a new file, which is an array. So go ahead and select that. The thing is, is this file won't, can't actually be read directly from the game. You have to import this data into this array, but this allows us to actually edit it in a spreadsheet as opposed to having to populate the array through code. We can actually edit everything here and then populate this into the array. Let's jump into it to make it easier. So we need it to be five by five. So that's what we selected for our array. So if you want to change this and add more, you just need to make sure that how, whatever this is set to, this sign array is also set to the same, or at least more. 
but that's what we're going to run with for right now. So that makes that a lot easier. Go ahead and save that. Let's actually name this array. So right now it's just called new array. Let's just do sign underscore copy. So this is all the sign copy. And to make this a little bit easier to understand, I'm just going to fill out the spaces that they are. So for instance, this is space zero, zero. So it's zero, zero. That's what this cell is. This cell is one, zero because it is one on the x-axis, which is going left and right here, and zero going down on the y-axis. This one, for instance, would be two, zero, and three, zero. And I hope I have this correct, and I don't have it reversed in my own head, and I don't look like an idiot. <laughs> um, this one should be four, zero. I'm going to go ahead and fill all of these in, just so when we call them, it'll make more sense. You don't actually have to do this. Okay, so... I just put in all of the cell spacing so that way we can call them later and make sure that we're seeing the correct space. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we load this in on the start of the layout. So what we're going to do is we will go back to game and this shouldn't take too much so we don't actually have to worry about making sure that it loads before everything else because we won't need it to right away. So what we're going to do is on start of layout, add action. Oh, you know what else we need to add? I apologize. We got to come back to here, double click. We need to add the Ajax plugin. So scroll on all the way down to the bottom, Ajax, double click, add Ajax. Okay, back to game. So on start of layout, add action. We're gonna go into Ajax and we are going to request a file. So request project file, double click. So we just need to give it a tag and we will call it copy get and we will not choose one of the icons we're going to choose sign copy okay all right so we're going to call that then we're going to go to add event ajax yeah on completed and the completed we need to put in the tag that we used up there so it will be copy underscore get so when this request is completed we want to add action sign array, double click, scroll on down to load. So we're going down to where it says JSON here, load, and we are gonna load from, so we can delete all that, it's Ajax, so down Ajax dot last data. So we should just load that when the layout loads and we should be good. Um, let's go ahead and click save, and there's an easy way to test this. Let's go ahead and go to debug layout. And if we check down the side here, we can go down to our sign array, select it, and we can see that it has been filled out with all of the information from our loaded file. So we are good to go on there. Now we can make updates to the copy if this update wants to show itself. Where'd you go? There it is. So now all we have to do if we want to make changes to the copy of the sign shows, we just fill it in here and then we will point the sign to display the text at a certain position. We're going to jump back over to object now. And I think we're all pretty much set to start making this work. We will select sign and we just actually need to add two instance variables. Add instance variable x, which will be a number. Oh, I can't use x. Uh, we will just call it copy x and copy y. So this will be the position in our array that it's going to be checking to find the text that it's supposed to display. And lastly, the one last thing we need to do is actually come over here to SF white and we want to come down to the sprite font and actually make a container with this one as well and we will do sf black so that way they're a container that means when we spawn in sprite font white it will also spawn in sprite font black so we don't have to worry about spawning in two things we can just bring in the one okay now we're going to go ahead and get some sign stuff going so let's go ahead i can move this up here let's right click add a new group we will call this signs select signs and first things first, we will hit B for a new blank sub event. Double click. We will go to player box. So player box. And we're going to be checking to see if the player box is overlapping another object. That object will be sign checker or sign check. 
OK, and click Done. All right, so if the player is overlapping sign check, we will hit B for a new blank sub event and double click System. And we're going to trigger once while true. So just start typing in trigger, trigger once while true. We're going to do a couple of things. So first, add an action. We will go to signpost. We are going to come down to spawn another object. And that object will be SF white. Click OK. That will spawn on layer. You know what? We don't actually have a good layer for this right now. So I'm just going to click done. We'll come back and edit this momentarily. Let's come over, lock level layer, add a new layer, and we will call this top. So this will be anything that needs to be above everything else. So we will call this top. Um, let's come back over into our game, eGame, double click, and let's fix this. So the layer it should be going onto is top. And we will actually, I don't know why I hit enter, I wasn't done. We will be spawning this at image point one, which for the sign, if you remember, is slightly above the sign. So we will spawn that in. Now we're going to want to make a couple of changes to the way everything comes in. Because right now, if we walk over, what's going to happen is it's going to spawn it in. Let's see if it actually shows up. So if we come over and walk over the sign, it spawns in the text. But the thing is, it spawns in both the white sprite font and the black sprite font in the exact same place which is not what we want because they're basically just overlapping each other there. So what we're going to do is set the SF black. First, we want to set it, move it to bottom of layer. So it'll be behind the white sprite font just because the shadow needs to be underneath. Then we need to go SF black and we want to set its position. So we will go set pos set position. And we will set its position to SF white dot X and SF white dot Y plus one. Actually, I want plus one on both. So what that'll do is that'll offset it a little bit to make it look like it is a shadow. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. Um, I'm going to really quickly, because if we're going to be messing with signs, we need to not keep having to walk around this whole thing. There we go. See, it shows up, but it doesn't go away. But as you can see, now the text looks like it actually has some depth to it. It has a shadow sitting behind it. I just think that has a little bit better look to it. So let's go back to game, and now we actually got to make it say something. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an action. And let's go, it doesn't matter which one, it can work for both. Sprite font white, we're going to do this with both. We will come down to set text, but we're actually not going to use set text. We're going to use typewriter text because that'll make it actually like type itself out. It looks a little cooler. I think it, it just adds a little more than just having it appear. So typewriter text. And what we're going to set this to, open quote, close quote, ampersand, sign array dot at. And now we need to put in the locations that we're going for. And instead of putting in, you know, one, five, so it's looking for three numbers here. It was looking for the X, the Y, and the Z, or Z if you're not from the US. Um, we aren't using Z, so that will, the last number will always be zero, but we also want to independently tell it what to say based on the sign that you're overlapping. So if you're overlapping a sign check, we are going to be checking the sign post. So the first number will be sign post, dot copy x comma sign post dot copy y comma zero and that's for the z order right there or that's for the z duration let's go ahead and make it 0 0.5 let's go ahead i'm going to copy and paste that whole thing and a fun little trick in construct is you can actually replace the object as long as the th as long as the two objects you're trying to swap share all of the same values and things that you need because sf black and sf white are basically the same thing i can hit r and object to be replaced so of all the objects that get called in here we have these three objects we will replace sf white with sf black and that's all we have to do so those things will type out the same both times. So now if we hit save and go check, 
there it is. So right now, because it is showing us the space in zero, zero, whereas now we can come in and if we make this one, one, let's go over to our sign copy here and it's space one, one, let's just change this to the typical hello world and just prove that if we walk over this sign, it's one, it's zero, zero. This one is hello world. And this one is zero, zero. So what's happening here is you can actually see, this is why I've been adjusting bounding boxes. If we, you don't need to do this. I'm just going to show for demonstration purposes. If we make this visible again and take a look, we are actually colliding with the corner here. And that's why that's triggering. So if you look, we're actually pretty far below the sign. We're a whole we're a whole space of the grid below, but it's counting it as us overlapping. So what we actually want to do is let's go ahead, double click sign check. Oh, I don't want to make that black. Let's go to its bounding box. And just like all the others, I forgot to do it on this one. We are going to move it in two in all directions. So move its bounding box in two, two, and two, this will just guarantee that if we walk up to the sign, it will only show up when we walk up to the sign. So now walking around the sign won't display the text until we are standing in front of it. Just a little thing, but that's why I do that. So let's go ahead and make sure we can make that text go away. I'm going to change this to not be visible anymore. Go back to eGame and we're gonna go ahead and if the player is not overlapping the sign, um, select all the way up here at the top, hit X for an else statement, and all we have to do to get rid of the text is go to SF white, destroy, and now the text should actually go away as we're overlapping. Oh, let me make sure we're playing the right layout. That works. Hello world, and it goes away. And that's pretty much how we want that to work. All right. Next time, we will get into actually making the signs reset um, the layout. But for now, we got the signs in. They say stuff that's pretty freaking cool. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed.